In episode 43, I showed you how to update multiple elements on a page using a single AJAX request. Uh, first, I loaded up the prototype JavaScript libraries, and then I used form remote 4 to submit an AJAX request when the form gets submitted. And then I responded to the JavaScript in my controller using some RJS to update multiple elements in that single request. Now in this episode, I want to show you how to accomplish basically the same thing, but using jQuery instead of prototype and RJS. Now switching over to jQuery basically means we have to leave all the Rails related helper methods and as well as RJS behind. But unless we install this plugin called jRails, and this will basically rewrite those helper methods and RJS methods to work with jQuery instead of strictly prototype. However, I think this kind of defeats the purpose of switching over to jQuery because uh, jQuery really encourages unobtrusive JavaScript, and that's what we want to do here. And um, using the Rails helper methods are still obtrusive. First, let's see what we're working with here. Uh, we have a product page where we want to add some reviews dynamically using Ajax. And so we can just add a review here. And then when we submit this, it's actually going to do an old HTTP request and reload the page here. And it changes a few things on this page. First, it adds a flash message. It changes the reviews count here, uh, adds a review to the reviews section, as well as clears the form. So we want to accomplish all of these things in one AJAX request instead of loading the page again. First, we need to include the jQuery JavaScript library in our application layout file, which we can do with JavaScript include tag. And then we have to mention jQuery, which I assume you've download, downloaded this and place it in your public JavaScript directory. Um, just download it from the jQuery site. And we also want to include our application.js file. Now make sure to include the application file after you include the jQuery library so that um, it's loaded up and will function properly. Now to add JavaScript unobtrusively, we don't want to mess with the actual HTML source of this page at all. We just want to tap into some elements dynamically through JavaScript and change their behavior. So uh, we can want to we want to work with our form here, which has the idea of new review, and we want to change this behavior so it submits the form using AJAX instead of a standard request. So to accomplish this, we just have to go to our application.js file and add the necessary JavaScript in here. So here we call document.ready, pass in a function into here, uh, and this will get executed when basically the DOM is loaded. And here we want to tap into our uh, new review form element, and just calling submit and passing in a function into here will um, basically override the submit behavior and um, basically execute this function when someone tries to submit the form. And here we want to do an AJAX request, so we can do it with a simple post call. And we want to submit to the form's um, action attribute, which is the URL to the, the page we want to load. And uh, the post data we want to pass is the form's uh, serialized um, attributes. And the third parameter here is I'm just going to pass null because that's actually the callback method which will be called when this is successful. But we don't need to do that because we're going to use the script type here. So this is kind of cool because this script basically means that um, whatever content is returned is going to be executed as JavaScript. So this way we can kind of mimic the behavior of RJS and prototype like we did in our earlier episode. And then finally we just want to return false so that the actual form doesn't get submitted normally. Oh, and I just need to clean this up a little bit. And there we go. Now when we submit this form, it'll be using an AJAX request instead of the normal request. And in the create action of our reviews controller, we want to change this behavior a little bit so it doesn't always do a redirect to. It'll respond differently depending on if it's HTML or a JavaScript request. So we can use that classic respond to block. If it's HTML, then we want to do that redirect. Otherwise, um, we want to render something out for the JavaScript. So we can make a new template here, and instead of an RJS template, we want to use ERB, um, because RJS is kind of limited to prototype, unless we have the JRails plugin. So this is kind of nice, because we can type any kind of JavaScript we want in here, and it will be executed when the request returns with the AJAX. For now, I'm just going to type in a simple alert message so that we can see if this is working. 
Now, if we tried this out now, it would not work because when a jQuery submits a request, Rails doesn't know if it's really supposed to be an HTML request or a JavaScript. It thinks it's an HTML because that's what it defaults to, and so it will try to do a redirect. But we need to tell Rails that it should be considered a JavaScript request and return the JavaScript view accordingly. We could do this in one of two ways. We can add a .js extension to all of our URLs whenever we're submitting a request that requires JavaScript back, or we could tap into a jQuery's AJAX setup method, tell it before it sends to, to change the request header type to um, accept JavaScript format. And Rails will read this and say, okay, this person wants JavaScript, so it will uh, send back the JavaScript request. Uh, I prefer this method just so that we don't have to worry about adding the JS extension to every request we do. All right, let's try this out by adding a review. And then this works. We get the Ajax works uh, dialog box. Now it doesn't, of course, update the page at all because we haven't instructed it to do that yet. All right, so instead of doing the alert message, let's update the page. We want to do really four things in here. One of them is add the flash message. So we can do so by tapping into um, our new review form again and saying before that we want to add the insert the flash message. All right, so in here we want to make a div called flash notice. And here we can insert that with some um, ERB tags. And it's a good idea whenever you're inserting dynamic content to always call escape JavaScript, just in case there's some kind of quote or something in there we don't want to uh, mess with our, our JavaScript here. And we want to just output our flash uh, notice here. We can just call delete so that it will be removed from there so it won't uh, carry over to the next request. And the next thing we want to do is update this reviews count here in the HTML, and you can see I already have an ID associated to that called reviews count. So in here in our JavaScript, we can call reviews count to grab that element, call HTML on it, which will replace the content with whatever we have in here. And so we can just call uh, pluralize, and then the view .product, views count, grab that number pluralize it with the word review, and then just end our uh, ERB tag. And then we want to insert our um, review, and I already have a, a div called reviews, and so we can just append to this. And then in here we want to just render the review partial, so you can call, um, first escape the JavaScript of course, just call render partial uh, review. And then finally, we just want to reset our new review form. Grab the first element in here, just call reset on it, and there we go. And I guess I should add uh, endings on those. I always forget those working in Ruby so much. Okay, let's see if this works. Right now it just says four reviews. Uh, let's try adding a review. Submit it. There we go, it didn't reload the page here, it just submitted our review here, added our flash message, cleared our form, and updated our reviews count. So it looks like everything worked. Let me finish up this episode by showing you how easy it is to extend jQuery and add your own functions. So for example, let's say we have a lot of Ajax forms that have this exact same code in them. Well, we can just create our own function on an element and say, uh, submit with Ajax, and then we can create this function by just calling jQuery.fn, the name of the function, submit with Ajax, and then equals a function. And then in here, we just type in whatever code we want. So it's basically doing the same thing on this specific element. And there we go. That's how easy it is to add functions to your jQuery elements. And once you get enough of these, you can turn it into a jQuery plugin. And there's a lot of plugins out there already, so you can just browse through those and see if they do anything that you need. This episode is sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. There you will find high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.